If you've ever thought to yourself, which one should I get? The DJI Goggles 3, are they worth it? Or am I better off with the value set of the N3s? This video is for you. Today we're gonna to be answering a question man has asked since the dawn of time. How the heck are you supposed to fold these fitted sheets? Uh, I mean, which should I get? Should I go value DJI with the N3? or should I go the Goggles 3? Hey, you absolute legends. Stu here from UAV Futures, and this one's going out to the DJI fanboys out there. Sorry, I don't know how to fold those fitted sheets. That's gonna be a mystery. It's gonna have to wait to another video. However, this one, the shootout, they're head to head between the DJI Goggles 3 and the N3 right here. Now, besides the stupid naming structure, which I'm sure is gonna trip me up in this video, we're gonna break it down and we're gonna find out why $230, is that gonna be worth your while? Or are you better off, you wanna jump in, you wanna do DJI, are you better off using the DJI Goggles 3? This is gonna be the head-to-head. -head. We're gonna talk about price, the screens, the field of view, if there's any latency difference, difference the comfort on your face. Do you like them? How are they actually when you are in the field? We're gonna get some other pilots cruising around, get their impressions as well, so you can find out, hey, I wanna fly DJI, which one of these two is going to be worth my hard-earned cash? Because I know you worked hard for it, so you deserve to have the right information to make the right decision so you can get up, get flying, and have a good time. Now, I have done a deep dive breakdown. I'm going to link both these videos in the description down below. But this one, the head-to-head, -head, we're going to be talking about some of the differences, some of the similarities, like they do both have inbuilt batteries. They do both bind up to the same VTXs. We're going to fly them around on the lights. We're going to find them around on the pros. They're very, very similar. They offer a lot of the same things. However, the internals are a little bit different. We've got some nicer screens in here. This one only does 60 hertz, where this one can do 100. Uh, they're double the price difference. They sit on your face differently. So let's go out to the field right now. We're gonna fly them around and you can make your own mind up and say, hey, is this one my value pick or am I better off saving up a little bit more cash or twice the cash, I should say, and getting the DJI Goggles 3. So let's go do it. Rip it around, fly FPV, and give you the information so you can make the right decision in three, two, one. So we're gonna be doing a bit of a DJI shootout right here, two goggles side by side. If you've ever thought to yourself, which one should I get? The DJI Goggles 3, are they worth it? Or am I better off with the value set of the N3s? This video is for you. We're gonna do two quick flights and then we're going to compare our experiences. We've got Stickman Steve in the background as well. So yeah, let's have some fun, rip these around and then give you the information so you can decide, hey, which is the right goggle for me? Cause it's not about having the best gear, it's about having the best time. All right, let's do it. Now here's a couple little stats in the background while we've got this flying around. So the price between the two, so the N3s, they're 230-ish dollars and the goggles three, they're around 500. Both of the screens inside these goggles, they're 1080p. However, there's a bit of a difference. The goggles three, they've got dual OLED screens in them and it is just one big LCD screen in the N3. Regarding the air units, this is where things change a little bit as well. The N3, it can only bind up to the latest generation. So that's the DJI 04 Pro and the DJI 04 Lite. But if you've got the goggles three, it can do both of the 04 versions as well as the previous generation, which was the DJI 03 air unit. Uh, the FPS, is a little bit different so the frames or the refresh rate of the screens themselves on the n3 you're uh, stuck or limited to 60 frames per second but on the goggles 3 that can go up to 100 frames per second which might make a difference if you're sort of into that racing uh, mode and things like that and then regarding the field of view you actually have a bigger field of view so it's a little bit more immersive on the n3 at 54 degrees and it's only 44 degrees on the goggles 3 and then finally i want to mention like glass or adjustments so on the goggles n3 it is very difficult. There's no adjustments for your eyes or IPD movements or focal lengths or anything like that. But on the Goggles 3, you've got both IPD adjustments and also you can adjust the focal length of them as well. The important part to note, I think, is when you get to try these on, one straight after the other. Because even if you had like an hour difference between your flights, your brain is not that good at remembering the nuances and the details between the two. Did I notice a difference? Yes. Was it more than I was expecting? It was actually, because I have really fond memories of the N3, like I really like them. We've been flying around with a lot of the G3 today. Putting these on, I think these are a more comfortable goggle, but that's about the only place where this wins. The clarity of these is significantly better. I feel like I don't like the boxy, uh, as well as having like that box zoomed out feeling just a little bit of the N3s, I don't like the curved picture. Like you can get used to it, but it's something I've noticed since we did our review. And when you compare it one after another to the G3s, to the N3s, it is uh, it is a bit of a night and day difference. These also felt like just a little bit brighter and a little bit clearer, like just some nicer optics in here. 
versus what you're looking at um, in the goggle and threes. Now in terms of weight on your face, believe it or not, I actually think these sit a little bit heavier. I know these are these are actually a heavier goggle, but they almost like they're supported better. It's like having a bigger backpack, but it's suited to your back a little bit more. It's got more padding on the shoulder pads or something. That's the best way that I can kind of describe it. But other than that, I think these are, there's a reason why they're almost twice the price. They're not gonna be twice the quality or anything like that in terms of, are they exactly double the performance that you're gonna get? No. If you've got the cash, I don't think there is anything wrong with the N3s. If I had never flown with the G3s, I would be more than happy to spend the rest of my days cruising around with these bad boys, the box goggle ones right here. They're a really solid choice too. For the price, 230 bucks, they come with a battery, outstanding. Should you upgrade to the G3s, it's really like, do you want that 20%, maybe 25% better FPV experience? And if you wanna get the most out of FPV and you're happy to spend almost $500, well, that's where these sort of shine. And I really gotta say hats off too to DJI in this situation because we do have both very, very differently priced options that still give you an amazing time in FPV, no matter which one you pick. So so anyway, let's uh, see what Steve thinks as well because we would have seen his two flights and we'll get his impressions. Steve, you've just flown in back to back. You've done the N3s, you've done the G3s. Let's get the differences, similarities, likes, things you disliked, all that sort of stuff. You got a million mosquitoes on oh, you. Oh no, where's, where's my little helper today? She's not doing much. Um, similarities straight off the bat is obviously that nice image. Yes. Yeah, it's a different screen. Um, coming back to this too is that big curvature of the screen. It almost seems like you're looking into a bowl, like a, a mirror bowl. Yes. But the clarity is still there, right? Like, yes, it's a cheaper screen. Yes, it's a box coil. But I can still see all those finer details at the tops of the grass and things. It's, mm -hmm. it's just amazing. I think for me, the comfort of these goggles is way better than the goggles three. Yeah. Okay. You, so you're on the same thing yep. that you prefer the comfort. Did you find, do you feel like these are heavier though? No, like, not oh, not. okay. Okay. You think these ones feel heavier for you? Yeah. Cause I think it's, they're not overall dragging on your face, but because all of the weight of the goggle is pressed into one spot. So you've got that point loading yep. on your forehead, you know? Okay. I think these support on my face better. They definitely fit my face better with the stock phone. Yes. No light leak at all for me, which is just awesome. I yep. love that. Yep. Um, you're obviously going to get a better experience with these being able to adjust for your diopters and things mm -hmm. the clarity is pretty impressive with these i don't think it's a, a huge massive phenomenal step up going from any other system to this i yes. personally don't a lot of people might disagree like i'm not disliking it at all i love it if i was just coming in and buying something yes i'd be going with the 04 with the goggles 3. okay although it doesn't fit me as nice you're going to get better range better penetration and just a better picture with these all right i do like the the picture in picture function as well yes but for an entry level goggle you're not going to regret these yep. you're really not over something like the um the uh, cadex light walk snail goggles l mm -hmm. they're great don't, don't get me wrong, they serve a, a huge purpose. If you already got that system and you want ride-alongs or something like that, or you just come in and want walk snail versatility, yeah, yes. go for them, they're, they're okay. Um, honestly, I think, yeah, the Goggles 3 is definitely the standout. What do, you, what do you think for the price? So for 230 versus 500? For 230, you're gonna get the same overall enjoyment. You're not gonna get the finer detail. You're not gonna get the little, you know, the, the, the finer details that DJI put into these goggles, you're definitely not. And that's why they're cheaper, right? It's yep. different screen. I think there's a couple of things you would improve, but I don't think either improvement would outweigh the other, if okay. that makes sense. Like the, the things I would improve on these don't make me not want to use them. Yes. If you handed me these and said, hey, this is yours for the next two years, yep. hey, I'd be stoked. Okay. You know? Like you're not gonna regret it. If you can save a bit of cash there, why not? Yep. If you do have the money and you want the best experience you can, yeah, go for it, man. Okay. They're awesome. Too easy. All right. So advice, someone coming in. It sounds like how much money you got, right? Yeah. Whether how you're much gonna, money you got? whether you're gonna, you, you, uh, you're not gonna be disappointed in either option. I feel kind of the same way that both are pretty viable. Yeah. 100%. Whether you want to go budget or whether you want to go these yeah. for our flying. Yeah. That, and that's important to make a distinction here where we just want to fly together, have some fun, do some freestyle, do some flying at the farm and have yeah. a good time with FPV. Both of these, I think, are pretty good value for yeah. what you get, for the experience that you can have. Yeah. There's no right or wrong answer there. It's just how much money do you want to spend? 100%. And another thing, going back to what I said in another video, is a lot of people aren't saying, with DJI, you can go to a storefront and you can try these on. Mm -hmm. Do that before you drop any cash yep. because it might change your mind. You might hate these on your face. And yes. Think, well, it's not worth that extra few hundred dollars. Coffee. You know what I mean? Like that's a 
big benefit to people that aren't talking about you can actually go and try these before you buy them uh -huh. it's yeah okay and then i guess final choice for you your financial situation mm -hmm. you've got to buy one let's pretend you've got to buy one got to buy one which one are you buying you're dropping the cash on them yeah. okay yeah. all right thank you no worries now here's the part where I know DJI's done a good job here because for me, if I had to pick between these two systems, it is really, really difficult when you look at it, the price to the performance kind of thing. Like, of course, these G3s, they're gonna be better than the N3s that we've got right here. However, they are significantly more expensive and in today's crazy world, depending on where you get them from with tariffs, like these could be up to over a thousand US dollars. So saving every single dollar counts. And if you can get that sort of like flight performance with the N3s, you're gonna have an awesome time. So I have to say, no matter which one of these you get, you're going to have an amazing time. The important part is just how much do you wanna spend? Now, I know I've seen a lot of other videos out there and this might be where I differ and on my channel because I truly do believe in budget and like just getting people flying, enjoying the hobby. You don't need the best gear to have the best time. You just need to have the best time with the gear that you have. Now, I would like to say for anybody who says, oh, you, the only way to go is to get the G3s, here is an important piece of facts you can look at through my channel with a bit of data as well. You will notice in some of my recent videos, or I guess in 2024, I flew an awful lot with Walk Snail, and I really don't have an allegiance to any system. I want you guys to have the best time that you can, but you will notice these box goggles, I flew with quite a lot, even though I've got the Avatar X system as well, and I really like these, and I know a lot of people swear by these, and they're a bit turned off when they have to go back to the N3s, but in my humble opinion, I've been doing this for 10 years, I really like the N3s. They're not perfect, but for a budget entry, I say budget, but for an entry level system to get into digital for the FPV, the FPV feed they offer back to your eyeballs, cruising around, you're gonna have an amazing time. It's not gonna be as good as these, but I feel like if I was coming in today and I didn't wanna absolutely break the bank and every single dollar counted, Look, this would be my personal choice. It might be different. Some people out there, they love racing. They're probably gonna be thinking about HD zero. Other people, if you're in the Walksnell system and you like some of the things that they're doing with head tracking and that sort of stuff, that is completely fine. For me, for my sort of flying and having fun now with the O4 air units, especially the little ones, you can put in some things like Lightning, which is traditionally why I like the Walksnell system. Having this budget option here, it's just uh, hats off to them. So I think that really goes to show that DJI has hit the sweet spot in terms of pricing. Not one of these goggles is better than the other, and the value for money you get from both of these, there is very strong arguments for both of them. You know, they're, they're, it's really hard to pick. A, there's no clear winner is what I'm trying to say. So whichever one of these you get, have a look at your situation, have a look at your finances. I think you're gonna have an amazing time with both of these. On that, go watch like some of these comparison videos if you'd like to know between like the N3s and if you're tossing up between that and the walk snail, I've got some of those videos up there. And a bit of a shout out too for my bonus videos over there for my members and my patrons. That's gonna be linked down below. So anyway, go watch that video if you're deciding which system to get and uh, I'll see you in the next one.